Hello, welcome to the channel that aims to bring some light into games left in the dark. This is From the Void. On July 2nd, 2021, just a few days after this video goes live, the PSP Digital Store will be closed forever. Now, since only the PSP Store is closing and not the PlayStation 3 or Vita, this actually means that we are not losing access completely to any PSP Digital game. We'll still be able to purchase and download any PSP game through the PlayStation 3 even after the PSP stars close down and transfer the games from the PlayStation 3 to the PSP using a USB cable. Yeah, that's right. You can purchase any PSP game through the PlayStation 3. Most of them will not run on the PlayStation 3, but can be transferred to the PSP and in most cases to the Vita as well and very easily too. And this is actually the best way to have digital games installed on your PSP in a legitimate way, because using the store through the PSP is a very difficult ordeal nowadays, requiring old routers that are not produced anymore, and on top of that, this option is going away soon. So I'm using this opportunity to explain how all of this works, as well as to highlight some unusual PSP games, most of them digital only, that are worth getting in any way you choose to do it, including through emulation if you're so inclined. So with all that being said, let's take a look at a bunch of unusual PSP games that are worth it. I will walk you through how to transfer games from the PlayStation 3 to the PSP right after we take a look at the first game on today's list. So here we go. First up is Ape Quest. This is a completely unexpected and rather obscure RPG spin-off of the Ape Escape series. I'm pretty sure that most people, even fans of Ape Escape, are not even aware that this game exists and it's a surprisingly fun little RPG. The combat is in turn-based fashion and it's rather enjoyable, while the exploration outside of battles is somewhat limited which simplifies things. While you walk around choosing which way to go, there will be random encounters of course and also random minigames. Your character manages to put himself in all manner of dumb perils, such as having to run from a rogue boulder or having to run in a banana peel infested area to get your money back. These minigames feel very similar to those in a Mario Party title, even presenting the rules and buttons to press before it starts. It's rather amusing and unexpected to have minigames like these in an RPG, and they provide a fun change of pace, at least in the beginning, and that's the problem though. Their repetition will get tiring after a while. Luckily, this game is rather short for an RPG, lasting less than 10 hours. This is certainly an amusing game, filled with comical cutscenes based around the fact that your main character, the ape prince, is really stupid in a very funny way. The entire plot is actually based on that, I found it pretty humorous. You can certainly do a lot worse in terms of quirky RPGs out there, so I found this a very worthwhile game. It is 100% exclusive to the PSP in digital form, and it will cost $7.99 for the bundle that comes with all three story chapters. So in this case, as I said on the intro, after the stars close, your only option to purchase these will be through the PlayStation 3 and then transferring the game to the PSP through the USB connection. And here's how to do it. It's very simple actually. You purchase the game through the PlayStation Store as normal, then it will appear on your dashboard as this bubble icon which is unplayable. If you click on it, it will ask you if you want to transfer it to the PSP. Now get your PSP, as well as the USB cable that comes with it, and connect the PSP to the PlayStation 3 with this cable. Your PSP will recognize the USB connection instantly. Then hit yes on the PlayStation 3 and it will simply transfer the game to the PSP. No connection to the internet required on your PSP. After it's done, your game will be in the memory stick. See? Very easy. You can use a similar process to do the same to transfer games to your Vita if you ever need it. Next up is one of the worst names for any game ever. What did I do to deserve this, my lord? And believe it or not, the original title of this game was even worse, but they changed it to avoid conflict with the Batman franchise. It was originally released as Holy Invasion of Privacy Batman. What did I do to deserve this? 
my god. Anyway, despite the trouble naming their game, the devs here had a very original idea that translates to a very unique and interesting gameplay. In this one you will be helping the demon lord Batman to create the most impenetrable dungeon capable of defeating any hero that invades it. And you do this by digging the area and unleashing monsters that are trapped within the blocks. Each type of block has a different monster within. Now here's where it gets really crazy. In order to make better monsters appear, you have to make a bunch of weaker monsters such as the slimes walk around the same path, which enriches the soil with nutrients and then the blocks change and you dig them to unleash better monsters. Then, the stronger monsters will feed on the weaker ones and evolve into better versions. You also have the ability to conjure portals through a very specific way of digging and then you can feed weaker enemies to the portals in order to be able to summon powerful demons. All that to make the dungeons as dangerous as possible so then when the hero team enters it they get destroyed and you win the match. It's crazy but believe me it's also really fun. The only issue in this game is that the difficulty is really high. You will fail a lot until you get how to dig efficiently. This one was released in physical form in Japan and in Europe, but I don't think the US ever got a physical release. But it also has a sequel in What Did I Do To Deserve This My Lord 2, which did have a physical and it's pretty much just more of the same. The original is available digitally for PSP and Vita for $4.99. Now, a compilation of two phenomenal games, Power Stone Collection. These are two amazing games, seriously, they are so much fun. You're seeing here that these are arena type, kind of Super Smash Bros style fighting games, but in 3D. And you may be inclined to put them aside because of this, but I wouldn't if I were you. Because the single player mode in these two games is incredibly fun. And that's because they control super well. They really nailed the gameplay in Power Stone. You will be facing fun and challenging boss fights, the arenas are varied and filled with surprises and items to use and the characters are completely different from each other including each having a super transformation when you gather three crystals during the match the power stone series are must play games even for non-fighting fans do not overlook these titles it is a real shame that this series didn't catch on because they are great games and the 3d aspect is different enough from the super smash bros series to justify their existence this compilation brings both entries as well as a collection mode where you have access to the movies, minigames and a lot of unlockables. Both of these were arcade and Dreamcast only games, but this compilation brought them to the PSP and it was also ported to the Vita for $9.99, which means you have plenty of options here, so don't sit on it. Go get some Power Stone action in your life, you're not regretting it, believe me. Out of all of these games on today's list, I believe that this is the only one to have a US physical release. Following up with Loco Roco Midnight Carnival. This is the third, and not counting the remakes, the last entry in the very creative and wacky Loco Roco series, and yet another entry from the very creative and wacky, but now also very sadly discontinued Sony Japan Studio. By the way, this studio is not formally defunct, it's just reformated around Team Asobi, the responsible for the Astro series, which is considered to be Japan Studio's only profitable franchise right now. But they have created some incredible incredible games, all creative inclined, and it's just a shame on Sony to have had several employees on this team fired or not have their contracts renewed. Really, these guys were some of the best Sony had to offer in terms of fun and creative games. I'm even thinking of making an entire video with all their games. So many great titles, it's not even funny. Anyway, I digress. Back to Loco Roco. This is a fun sort of platformer where you tilt the screen with L and R 
In order to have your round shaped guy roll that way and by pressing both you cause them to bounce. It takes some time to get used to the way that this game controls and it can be frustrating until you get there. But it's certainly a fun and challenging game if you push through. Midnight Carnival is available for the PSP and Vita for $5.99 or $9.99 for the bundle that includes a new level pack, a new ability and two new minigames. Next up is the completely demented Chouaniki Zero. Okay, this is an absolutely flipped out insane side-scroller shooter that I'm including here because of the humor factor. It has really crappy graphics, from the characters to the animations and even the backgrounds. While the enemy and character designs are mostly made of hilariously ridiculous, muscular men, the gameplay is nothing spectacular either. It's a somewhat decent shooter where you can flip directions to shoot enemies coming from your back while your sidekick muscle man is capable of blocking some types of bullets which is a nice addition but other than that this game barely qualifies as a decent shooter. There isn't a lot here and the difficulty is really high in the final two levels. But again, the humor factor here is through the roof with several hilarious enemies and cutscenes. Even the configuration options are amusing. This is surely not going to be for everyone. One. And I'm sure that the old school titles in the series are better than Zero. But it's still like, worth mention because of how funny this can be depending on your sense of humor. Joaniki Zero is available for PSP or Vita for $5.99. Next up is Brandish the Dark Revenant. This is a PSP remake of the original Brandish for the SNES. That game was somewhat infamous for having a severely compromised minimap that would not rotate as the player did, which led to a lot of confusion in the exploration aspect. But the remake fixes that issue, letting the game shine on its many qualities. Brandish is a very different type of action RPG dungeon crawler because of how different the control scheme is in this game. At first, this may put some of you off, but it's actually a positive in my opinion. Pushing the D-pad left or right will have your character sidestep and down makes him walk backwards. The character only turns to another direction if you press L or R. This may sound dumb, but the combat is made more interesting because of this. It's hard to explain, you have to feel it to understand it yourself and it takes a while to get there in this game, but it's a positive, trust me. If you don't press anything, your character will parry enemy's attacks, so you gotta pay attention at the enemy's tells when he's about to attack. I like this gameplay, however unusual it was, and the exploration here is fantastic, which justifies the dungeon crawling style, which in many other games can be a detriment. Brandish has two different modes, and on the harder one you control the female antagonist, which is pretty interesting, and together they will take around 30 hours, so not super long. This is a great remake of a classic title from the SNES that should not be overlooked by action RPG fans. Other than the PSP, this game is also available on the Vita, but it's rather expensive at 20 bucks. Next is yet another incredibly fun and creative game from Sony Japan Studio, Patchwork Heroes. Telling ya, Sony Japan Studio man, these guys were out of control. This is one of their lesser known titles, and to no one's surprise is yet another incredibly original game both in premise and in gameplay. You control a squad of patchwork heroes in a war against the invading giant airships. So what do you do to win? You attach to the side of the airships and cut through their holes to detach entire sections until there isn't enough left to fly and the whole thing crumbles down. Just genius. And as you can guess, the gameplay is the most pure kind of fun. You can use bombs to speed things up, but those are limited. You have a special that allows you to cut through tougher sections and to do it faster. And there will be all sorts of enemies to be mindful of. It's kind of a short game, but there are challenges to extend the duration. This is one of the best titles on the PSP period, just go get it. It's also available on the Vita and it's kind of cheap at $7.99. Next is Savage Moon The Hurricane Pain. Okay, 
This is a rather deep tower defense type of game taking place on the Hera system of moons. You decide how much funds and other resources to bring to each moon in order to defend it from the insect looking creatures that invade it. You can build several different types of structures, even ones aimed at forcing the enemies to take different routes, which is a clever addition. As far as tower defense games go, this is a very solid title that will present a nice challenge for fans of the genre. It goes for $7.99 and can be played on the PSP or Vita. Following up with another lesser known title from Japan Studio, Numblast. Despite the name, this will require no mathematical abilities on your part. This is somewhat of a Tetris style puzzle game mixed with a match 3, or in this case match 4. The controls are really simple, you just rotate any quadrant to make 4 of the same number meet in a square shape. Then they will flip to the next number from 1 to 4 and back around. Then you have a small amount of time to get the adjacent tiles to match the next numbers and you can keep comboing up a bunch of times. It's a rather addictive gameplay, I must say. If you like Tetris or Bejeweled, you will most likely enjoy this too. There are several different modes to change things up and some funny cutscenes when you unlock new stuff. It's a great little game. Numblast goes for $4.99 but it's not available on the Vita, weirdly enough. But you can also play it on the PlayStation 3, although the PSP is a much better fit, cause this is a perfect pick up and play sort of game. And that's it for now, just wanted to showcase some unusual PSP games since the stores are closing down soon. But again, these will most likely still be available to be purchased and downloaded through the PlayStation 3 and then transferred to the PSP, so you'll still have the option to put them on your PSP legitimately if that's what you want. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, leave a like and subscribe, it would really help me out a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.